let us start with the lecture 18. What we did in the previous two classes were uh, basically talking about uh, regular perturbation methods for finding approximate solutions to equations which had a small parameter. And uh, in both these systems, the small parameter was in the differential equation itself, okay. Now, uh, so far you are actually comfortable with solving problems where the boundary conditions uh, are, you know, applied along surfaces which are uh, surfaces of some coordinate being equal to a constant. For example, if it is a spherical coordinate system, you would say r equal to constant, that is the surface of a sphere. If it is a rectangular uh, Cartesian coordinate system, you would say y equals constant and you know how to apply the boundary conditions there, right. But sometimes uh, you could have a situation where the boundary, the surface is not going to be defined as y being equal to a constant or r being equal to a constant. It could be y is a function of x, okay. And uh, when you write the boundary as y equals function of x, maybe there is a small parameter occurring in this form of a surface, the, the definition of the surface, okay. So that means this is actually occurring on the boundary and uh, what we are going to do now is trying to find solutions to problems of this kind okay using the method of domain perturbation again we're going to follow uh, gary leal very closely so this is also explained in gary leal the other earlier two examples were also uh, worked out in uh, gary leal okay this is just for your uh, reference so now we're going to focus on domain perturbation And we use this when the boundary of the domain in which we are solving is of the form no y equals let us say f of x comma epsilon okay that is that is the surface of the actual problem i will give you an example to illustrate this what we are going to do is look at the surface this if we can visualize as a perturbation of y equals constant, okay, because you know how to solve problems where y is constant, that is the, when the surface is y equals 0, y equals 1, you know how to apply the boundary condition. So, if this is can be viewed as a perturbation of this kind of a surface, then since you, we can possibly try to do a perturbation of the domain in terms of this and then seek a solution. So, that is the idea, okay. So, then we get an approximate solution solution of the original problem whose surface is given by one, okay. So, whenever you so, the earlier problems that we talked about, they were what we called regular perturbation problems because you had the difference, the small parameter occurring in the differential equation. Here, the small parameter is actually occurring in the definition of the surface which is actually defining my boundary, okay. So, to give you an idea of this, um, let us look at 
the flow in a micro channel with a wavy wall. Now you are all used to uh, pipes whose surfaces are rough, okay? but supposing there is a periodicity in the roughness, then uh, instead of just saying that it is a random roughness that you have, let us say that you have a periodically uh, rough surface. So again to keep life simple, what we are going to do is, we are going to look at uh, a system like this. face okay so that's basically my wall with a wavy uh, surface okay now let me get my coordinate system straight this is y and this is x and into the plane of the board is z Okay, so Z is into the plane of the board, into the board. I am looking at a problem where we have flow in the Z direction, which is basically flow along the parallel to the grooves that we have. Okay, it is not in the uh, X direction, it is in the Z direction. So flow, so these grooves that you have, they are actually in the z direction and the flow is in the z direction which is parallel to the grooves. Now uh, why would anybody be interested in a problem of this kind? Sometimes what happens when you are talking about flows in micro channels, the Reynolds numbers are so low that the mixing is very poor, the flow is laminar. Okay? So when you possibly give some, induce some surface roughness, then you can possibly induce not turbulence because your Reynolds number is still low, but mixing because you can possibly have um, velocities uh, because uh, induced in directions par uh, perpendicular to the flow direction. So you would have velocities induced in the x and y directions and so you can get better mixing. Okay? So basically this surface is actually inducing the uh, two other components of velocity or that is the idea. Okay? So now what we are going to do is, we are going to, uh, so motivation is, motivation for this is uh, possible. Improvement in mixing in low Reynolds number flows. Okay. So because of the surface being rough, I may have some vortices in induced here, and so maybe better, better mixing. The other thing. Uh, now to explain uh, what is happening here, how would I define the uh, uh, wall? These are my walls, okay, they are actually rigid walls. So this is supposing, since this is periodic, so I am assuming that this is periodic and the first trigonometric function which comes to my mind when I say periodic is sine. Okay. So I am going to say that this guy, the mean value is let us say at a distance of y equals d by 2. This is d by 2 is the mean value. Okay. So the way I am going to look at this uh, actual surface is y is d by 2 multiplied by 1 plus epsilon sin um, 2 pi x by L, where L is the wavelength in the x direction of this periodicity. Okay? So the actual wavelength 
wavy wall is defined as y equals plus d by 2, this is the top surface, the bottom surface will be minus d by 2, the entire channel is of the thickness d, okay. Okay. So, epsilon basically gives you some control over what is the amplitude of the um, periodic nature which is imposed. So, the way I am looking at this problem, there is a constant value d by 2. So, so if this had been actually, this is like, again, if epsilon is 0, it reduces to the problem of flow between two flat plates, which we have seen earlier, okay. The top surface is given by plus d by 2, the bottom surface is going to be given by minus d by 2. So, the channel in the y direction, the gap between the plates is actually d, it extends from minus d by 2 to plus d by 2 and uh, L is what is L? The wavelength of the periodic pattern. Epsilon is the amplitude. If you wanted very you no know, large amplitude thing, epsilon controls the amplitude. And of course, what we're going to do is keep life simple and look for fully developed solutions. That is, we have a very long uh, plate uh, extent in the z direction and we look for, look for fully developed solutions to the flow, okay. So, as you can see now, if epsilon is 0, I, my surface it becomes y equals plus d by 2, y equals minus d by 2, those are the walls and then y equals constant, you know how to solve the problem. I mean, you will just do whatever separation of variables and then you have to find those constants which come out when you do the integration. So, you put y equals d by 2 and then you are able to find the constant. What is the problem now? When you do the, you can you know, possibly solve your differential equation. But when you are trying to find the arbitrary constants which are going to come, you, you can't put y is equal to this surface here because the, you want a constant and what you are going to get is a function of x, okay. So that is where the problem is going to arise. So I just want to show you that you just can't substitute y equal to this because you are trying to find a constant, arbitrary constant of integration by applying the boundary conditions and since this is not a clean surface, you got a problem, okay. So, I just want to show here that as epsilon tends to 0, the, the wall is given by y equals plus or minus d by 2. I mean, the two walls, one is plus d by 2, the other is minus d by 2, okay. The walls, I should write the walls are given by, right. And we know how to solve that. So basically what I am going to do is, I am going to do a perturbation analysis, but now I am going to do a perturbation analysis keeping the fact that this guy is going to be perturbed about this, okay, that is the idea. And since we are doing it on the boundary, so you have a domain which is actually uh, periodic, I am going to look at this boundary as a perturbation of the constant wall. So, that is the reason it is a domain perturbation problem. The domain is being perturbed. The domain of the solution is being perturbed, okay. So, we are looking at a steady state, low Reynolds numbers flow and uh, what is going to be the Navier-Stokes, the, uh, the um, momentum equation. This is going to be 
low Reynolds number flows, so inertial terms are going off, okay. So, we we'll just go back to what we did earlier. So, since we have low Reynolds numbers, the inertial terms drop off and what I have is 0 equals minus dp by dz plus mu multiplied by d squared w by dx squared plus d squared w by dy squared. The guy does not depend on z, it is fully developed. It depends on y because clearly the boundary is there and it depends on x because clearly there is a periodic nature of the surface in the x direction, okay. So, w is going to be now a function of x and y. So, what I am doing is I am basically looking at a two dimensional analog or extension of what you, we did earlier in the class where we had only a one dimensional flow, okay. So, we are going to uh, d squared, write this as d squared w by dz squared, oh sorry, x squared plus d squared w by dy squared equals dp by dz and clearly the pressure gradient is negative. So, what I am going to write do is write this as minus g, where g is positive, okay. So, here g equals minus dp by dz. and uh, I am going to keep the mu here, okay. We we'll do the usual stuff which is try to make things dimensionless. Clearly, what are the uh, important scales that we need to look at? We have a length scale in the x direction. So, what is the characteristic length scale in the x direction? That is going to be L because that is the wavelength of your variation in the x direction. So, x characteristic is L. What about y characteristic? That is D, that is the gap between the plates. And uh, the other thing that we need to do is worry about the velocity because that is what we are trying to do uh, find out and we need to have the characteristic velocity which is WCH. And since the flow now is driven by the pressure, so we need to uh, include the pressure gradient or g in this case, g is positive in the definition of our uh, characteristic velocity and that is going to give me g multiplied by d squared divided by mu, okay. The gap between the plates is being used to define because that is the one which is going to decide the, the average gap between the plates is what is going to define your viscous resistance to the flow. So, let us use all this and make this uh, equations dimensionless. Saying that uh, I have d square w, w characteristic comes out, I have g times d squared by mu, okay, times d square w star by dx star squared and x characteristic is L squared plus d square w star by the y star squared and y characteristic remember is d squared okay and uh, this must be equal to minus g and there is already a mu there which I like to keep here okay. So, I have just made my equations dimensionless, the star variables define my dimensionless uh, quantity. So, w star is w by w characteristic and so on. Similarly, for x star and y star. So, all the star fellows are dimensionless, 
okay. Um, so, you can clearly cancel out these mu's, clearly cancel out the g's and what you have is and multiply throughout by d squared you get d squared by L squared times the partial derivative with respect to x star squared plus d squared w star by d y star squared equals minus 1, okay. That is what I get. So, this is my differential equation. What I need to do is look at the uh, boundary conditions. The boundary condition is that on the surface since I have a rigid wall, the velocity has to be 0. The no slip boundary, it is not moving. So, the, the no slip boundary condition basically tells me that w equals 0 at y equals plus minus d by 2 times 1 plus epsilon sin 2 pi x by L. And I can define my characteristic, uh, use these definitions of y c h and x c h and write this equation in terms of the star variables which basically tells me that at w equal to 0, I mean w is equal to 0 at this tells me w equals 0 or w star equals 0 because I want to make w also dimensionless at y star equals plus or minus half 1 plus epsilon sin 2 pi x star, okay. That is my no slip boundary condition. So, either I can solve the problem in the full domain that is from plus half to minus half, okay, or I can just say that look I am only interested this, the solution is going to be symmetric and I am going to be looking at only one half of the solution because we are looking at one half of the solution I can get the other half. So, if you do that uh, we can use these two boundary conditions and solve perfectly fine or we can uh, also exploit the symmetry and uh, use that uh, at w star d w star by d y equals 0 y star equals 0 at y star equals 0. Okay. So, that means you are only solving for half domain and then you can extend what is happening in the other half domain by just extending it, okay. This allows us to find the solution in the half of the domain and we extend to the other half by symmetry arguments, okay. So, yeah. So, will it not be also having not, how can we say y star equal to 0 directly? Not also. No, the center line. Unfortunately, I have dropped the uh, this thing. So basically, I am saying that the center line is the center of my domain everywhere. So at every point, y star equal to zero is going to be the center point of my channel. So when you have the uh, two crests, they are in phase. The two troughs are in phase. So y star equal to zero is always my center line. See the way I have written this. The top surface, top wall, and the bottom wall both are in phase. The wavy pattern is in phase. So, y star equal to 0 is always the center line, and along this, it is basically the uh, pattern is symmetric across this, okay. If they were out of phase, then you have to, you may not be able to use this. So, 
this basically tells me that y star equal to 0 is my center line throughout x for all value as I go along x, okay. So what this means is y star equals 0 is the center line since the um, periodicity in the top and bottom walls are in phase. That means the two peaks are coinciding, I mean this guy's peak and this guy's bottom thing will be coinciding and then the troughs will coincide, okay. So now uh, what we want to do is uh, just extend what we have done earlier and uh, which is seek W star at okay uh, we will now drop the stars huh? we will drop the stars for uh, convenience for my convenience so I do not have to keep writing these stars. So w at y equals uh, half times 1 plus epsilon sin 2 pi x. So this is the function which I want to evaluate. I want to evaluate w at along this surface at y equals half of 1 plus sin 2 pi x. I like to write this as w at y equals half. Just x, I'm going to use the definition of the Taylor series of a function. If I have f of x, I'm going to write it as f of x equals f of x naught plus f dash of x evaluated at x naught multiplied by x minus x naught, right? So that is the whole idea, that is what we are going to, uh, uh, using Taylor series expansion, I am going to write this as um, f of x evaluated x naught, x naught is corresponding to epsilon equal to 0, okay. dw by dy evaluated at y is equal to half multiplied by x minus x naught which is epsilon by 2 sin 2 pi x. Okay, this is x, so x0 is epsilon by 2 sin 2 by x plus d square w by dy square times epsilon by 2 times sin 2 pi x, the whole square, right, by 2 plus higher order terms. So all I am doing is we have obtained this using a Taylor series expansion. Okay, which is f of x equals f of x naught plus f dash of x naught multiplied by x minus x naught plus etc. Okay, the higher order terms which I am just not going to worry about. So what we are going to do now is, the now what have I done? See what I have done is I have made a transformation I'm, or I'm, this particular Taylor series expansion has allowed me to evaluate the w at y equals half and that is basically something which I am comfortable with. That is in my comfort zone because if you tell me y equals half, I know how to uh, plug in the boundary conditions and get my arbitrary constants of integration because the boundary condition is basically used for getting my constants of integration, okay. When I have to evaluate w at y equals half, I am fine, I know how to do this. So basically what I have done is I have taken this w evaluated on this surface which is not uh, one of the regular surfaces y equals constant 
and uh, exploiting the fact that this is just a small deviation from a y equals constant surface, y equals half and uh, doing a Taylor series expansion, okay. So I have w uh, at y equals half plus the first derivative plus the second derivative term and of course all these derivatives are evaluated at y equals half, okay. So now the problem that I am solving is the differential equation which is right here and that symmetric boundary condition which I am comfortable with because there is no epsilon there, okay and this fellow here which has the epsilon in it. So what I am going to do is I am going to, uh, our problem is now reduced to, so we now have to solve this problem. equals minus 1 and let me write the easy boundary condition first which is the symmetric boundary condition is 0 and the w equal to 0 on that surface I am going to write as 0 equals w at y equals half plus dw by dy at y equals half times epsilon by 2 sin square 2 pi x, sin 2 pi x, d square w by dy square value rate at y equals half times epsilon by 2 sin 2 pi x the whole square, okay. So, w along the surface, I am just using this, w, this w is 0, so 0 must satisfy this. So basically what I have done is I am trying to show you now, I have just transformed the problem into something where the boundary condition is evaluated at y equal half, the parameter epsilon is occurring and this is a small parameter assuming that this guy, this wave is having a very small amplitude and I want to seek a solution to this problem, right. So in order to seek a solution to this problem, we know how to do this because the, my earlier irritant was my surface was having the function of x in it. So I have used the Taylor series expression and gotten rid of that problem. I have all these conditions being evaluated y equals half. So now I can uh, hope to proceed further in the sense that use the same idea as what we had earlier, seek w as w0 plus epsilon w1 plus epsilon square w2 etc. Because now W, this guy does not, this guy is fine, does not have epsilon in it, this does not have epsilon in it, but this boundary condition has the epsilon in it, okay. And so if epsilon were to be 0, I know what the solution is, I mean this is a flat wall, right. If epsilon is 0, that means the wall is flat and I can find the solution W at y, y equals half is 0. And uh, so for epsilon equal to 0, I can possibly find the solution. And uh, for epsilon non-zero, I will have to make corrections. So the same idea as what we had earlier, I am just going to seek it in this form and now I am going to substitute this everywhere in the differential equation, in this boundary condition and in this boundary condition and group terms of order epsilon to the power 0, epsilon to the power 1. Let us do the one which is challenging which is this and uh, in the sense slightly more uh, challenging than the other two. They are not all that challenging. If it had been too challenging, I would not have done this in the class, right? So, what we are going to do is just substitute this. So, shall I just say this is some number 3 and this is some number 2. Substitute 3 in 2 and uh, what do I get? 0 equals w0 plus epsilon w1 plus epsilon square w2 evaluated at y equals half, that is my first term, I am just substituting this guy there, okay, plus epsilon by 2 sin 2 pi x, that is this multiplied by the derivatives
half plus whole squared and there is a by 2 also which I need to be careful about. Okay, all I've done is uh, substituted this in this expression here. Okay, so basically I'm saying just look at this problem. The first three lines, that's my problem. It has a small parameter epsilon in it, and therefore that motivates me to seek my solution in the form of this power series. Okay, in epsilon, and I'm just substituting this to find out w0, w1, w2, like we've done before. Only thing is now this epsilon was not in the differential equation but this was in the domain. So what do we do? We need to group terms of order epsilon to the power 0, epsilon to the power 1, etc. So what about order epsilon to the power 0? Which is, so this guy is clearly of order epsilon because there is already an epsilon here which multiplies everything. This has epsilon squared because it multiplies everything. The only thing which is of order epsilon to the power 0 is this w0 term okay so this tells me an order epsilon to, and this has to be valid remember for all epsilon any arbitrary epsilon so that means each and every coefficient has to be uh, zero this mean this implies w0 must be equal to zero at y equals half because this is the only term which is of order epsilon to the power zero or order one all these guys are whatever what about order epsilon to the power 1? This contributes, okay. So I have W1 plus this will contribute, only this term will contribute, and that is W1 plus sine 2 pi x divided by 2 multiplied by dw0 by dy, this equals 0 at y equals half, okay. I can't say that's equal to this, that gives me this, okay. So you can already see the sequence emerging. I would have solved it for w0 first and once I know the solution, I come back and I find w1 and so on and so forth and uh, I'm going to just uh, do order epsilon squared and then we will stop, okay. So order of epsilon squared gives me W2, that's this term, this multiplied by this gives me order epsilon squared, okay, which is plus half of sin 2 pi x times dw1 by dy, okay. And this multiplied by this gives me epsilon squared again, all the other guys give me higher order terms. So I have plus 1 by 8 of d squared w0 by dy squared multiplied by sin squared 2 pi x and this must be 0. Okay. And remember this is all evaluated at y equals half. All these guys are evaluated at y equals half. So now I am in a good position because my boundaries are all being evaluated at y equals half and uh, I can seek to proceed with finding my solution for w0, w1, w2, okay. Now that is the differential equation, so these are the three boundary conditions which I have. Um, I mean it is the same boundary condition for different order terms, 
let us do the same analysis for the differential equation as well as the other boundary condition. That is, I have to substitute W in terms of this here as well as here, correct? I got to do it everywhere. So, um, let us do this easy fellow first, dW by dy equal to 0 at y equals 0 implies d by dy of w0 plus epsilon w1 plus epsilon square w2 plus etc equals 0 at y equals 0, okay. And here there is no expansion business because about I have already y equal to 0. So, I am perfectly fine with just using it as it is. So, this implies dw0 by dy is 0 and order epsilon to the power 0 implies dw i by dy equals 0 at order epsilon to the power 0 for all i, okay. That is what you are going to get because epsilon, order epsilon will give me dw1 by dy uh, y is 0 and so on. What about the differential equation? That is going to give me, yeah, it is fine. Yeah, this is all evaluated at y equal to 0. This is all at y equal to 0, correct. And uh, substituting in uh, the differential equation, what would I get? At order epsilon to the power 0, I would get d square by L square, d square w0 by dx square plus d square w0 by dy square equals minus 1 and so on and so forth, okay. For all that from the bar 1, it would be the same thing, okay. Similarly for other orders. Other orders, other higher orders. Yeah? Equal to? Other orders, Other orders would be equal to 0, you are right, absolutely right. Thank you. Otherwise, that would have been a bigger problem tomorrow. <laughs> so, uh, for um, n greater than or equal to 1, order f to the power n, d square by L square, d square w n by d x square plus d square w n by d y square will be equal to 0. That is absolutely right because all the, this is of order epsilon to the power 0, all the other higher order terms do not exist, okay. So, this would be 0 and that is true for all the other, uh, higher order terms, okay good. So, we all said to find out, so we do the usual stuff, find w0, find w1, w2, okay. So, how do you go about finding w0? So, w0, a problem for W0 is d squared by L squared, d squared W by dx squared plus this one, okay. Subject to dW0 by dy equals 0 at y equals 0 and W0 equal to 0 at y equal to half. So now, I want you to just look at the differential equation which tells me that w0 is a function of x and y, okay. And, uh, but when you look at the boundary condition, you do not have anything in the boundary condition which is going to actually induce a variation in the x direction, okay. If at all the, the reason why we put a variation in the x direction was that the original problem had um, a variation in the x direction in the, in the boundary. But here, I am saying, look at the boundary condition, there is nothing in the boundary condition to impose the flow. The dp by dx is independent of, dp by dz is independent of x, okay. So basically what I am saying is, w0 is 
going to be independent of x since there is nothing to induce an x dependency and therefore I can come here and I can just neglect the uh, dependency on x and I have my classical problem equals minus 1 and uh, w naught equals 0 and y equals half and uh, w naught derivative equal to 0 at y equals 0. So that is basically saying that when epsilon is 0, you have flat plates, okay. And my w0 solves the, remember this is all consistent because w0 solves the problem with epsilon being equal to 0. If epsilon is 0, my periodic perturbation that I have on the wall is not there. I have flat plates and I have flat plates with the pressure drop imposed in the z direction and it is sufficiently long in the x direction. I can neglect the variation in the x direction and I can I just get my parabolic profile in the y direction with these boundary conditions. So this of course you can solve and you should be able to get your parabolic profile, okay. So once you get the solution for w0, you go back and uh, so, uh, find the solution to the problem for w1, then find the solution for the problem w2, okay. And uh, one of the things which we would also like to ask is, is what is the effect of these perturbations uh, on the wall on the flow rate which is through the channel, okay. Is a flow, if I am going to keep my pressure drop the same, the gradient the same for a fixed length and I have a flat channel and I have a wavy channel, is it going to uh, result in an equal flow rate or a higher flow rate or a lower flow rate? So, so that way you can uh, get an idea about uh, whether you can process more uh, chemicals in your uh, channel or not.